This video and others like it are made possible thanks to the generous support of my Go Make Things members. A recurring membership helps me create more videos like this and also get you some cool perks. Join or learn more at gomakethings.com slash join. Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from gomakethings.com. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to share state between different web components. This is a conversation I had with a friend of mine a few days ago, and I thought it would be nice to put together a quick video on kind of where I shook out on this issue. So um, I think a, a kind of a good example to use when we're talking about this sort of thing is something like an e-commerce platform. Um, so I've got a link to the checkout cart and it displays the number of items in your cart. And I also have a handful of items. Now behind the scenes in the HTML, we have a cart link uh, web component, as well as some product listing web components. And these all work off of a cart object, which holds the items that are in the cart. When you add an item to the cart, you want several things to happen. You want the cart link uh, web component to update the number of items that are displayed. And you also want for items that are in the cart, you, you don't want the button there. You want some text saying this item is in your cart already. Um, obviously in a real e-commerce platform, you can have multiple quantities, different sizes, things like that. But for our purposes, we're gonna keep this really simple. Um, so let's take a look at how this all works. So the, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but the one that I really like is um, using custom events and then listening for them. And to help us with that, we're gonna create our own little signal um, class. So um, I've created a class called signal. I've decided for our purposes not to make this anything generic. You can think about this more the way you would like a, a store in React or Vue or something like that. So um, it is going to accept a value, which it's going to store as a property. And then I'm going to add an add method that we can use to add items to our cart. Um, so one of them will be the key and the second argument will be a value. When the add method is run, we are going to update our object, this value with the key and the value that was provided. So we'll just, we'll add those or update them in our cart. Uh, then, we are going to use the new custom event method to create a new event called cart updated. Um, we're going to pass along the key and value that were added as details in case we need them for some reason. Uh, and then we'll dispatch our event. Um, and we're just gonna do this on the document because this is not tied to any particular element. While we're in here, because we're gonna need these things, let's also add a couple of convenience methods. Um, one of them size will um, convert our, um, our object into an array of keys and then return the length so we can find out how many items are in the cart. And uh, we'll also add a has method that we can use to check if a key is inside that object or not, just to see if items have already been added to the cart. And with that out of the way, instead of using a plain object, we will create a new signal, pass in an empty object, and then assign that, that signal class or that object back to the, um, the cart variable. And with this, we're now ready to actually start building out our web components. Um, so let's start with, um, let's see, which one do I, do I wanna start with? I guess let's start with the cart link. Um, so uh, I am creating a new cart link element, um, extending the HTML element class. Uh, so this is going to take our custom element cart link and it's going to turn it into a web component proper because we're extending a class we run the super method to make sure it inherits inherits rather all the parent class properties of the html element class um, and then um because we're going to need to do it a few times uh, i am going to move all of the generating of ui into an uh, a render method on our class so we'll run this render to set up the initial ui Inside our render method, we're going to set the inner HTML of this, the custom element that uh, this was instantiated on. And we're going to inject a link to the checkout page. We're gonna add a cart emoji and we're gonna get the cart size from our, our cart signal object. Uh, and we're gonna render that into the string as well. 
Um, so we've got our um, we've got our our HTML here. What we want to do now is um, actually listen for those cart updated events. So whenever the cart gets updated, we want to actually run our render again. So I'm going to listen for cart updated events on the document. I'm going to pass in this the current instantiation so that we can use the handle event method. And inside the handle event method, I'm going to run this render. Um, and that will um, just update the DOM for us whenever that happens. Now, to see this in action, let me go ahead and comment out product listing for a minute. And we'll come back over here and we'll reload, we'll reload this. So you see we've got we've got nothing there at the moment. But this is all global, so I could do something like cart add. Um, and we're going to say, um, let's call it Jolly Roger. We're going to give it a value of one. Cool, right? We'll do, um, so this, this will not change anything because we're setting the same value. But um, if we were to add something different, let's say um, anchor, we can do it again. We can add parrot. And so for every item that we add, this is automatically updating for us now which is beautiful, that's exactly what we want. Now, let's go ahead and create the product listing um, web component. So we're gonna do something very similar for this one. We are going to create our product listing custom element or define it. We're gonna extend the HTML class and run our constructor. Um, this one has a couple of properties that are unique to each item, a price and a UID or unique identifier. Uh, so we will get those attributes and assign them as properties, this UID and this price. For the price, uh, it comes along as a string. We want a number, so we're going to parse float that um, to convert it into a number first, and then we'll save it. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a render method to update our UI. And in that render method, we are going to, again, update the inner HTML of our web component. In a real world application, I would probably do something different. I would probably be looking at like DOM diffing or um, maybe just updating the text inside some elements um, or maybe creating some elements, just something to protect me from cross-site scripting attacks or from overly clobbering the DOM um, unnecessarily. But for our purposes, simple, easy to understand. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to see if the cart has an item with our UID in it. And if it does, we're going to show this item is in your cart. If not, we'll render a button to add to cart um, and then we'll display our price inside that button. Uh, so now, if I reload the page, you can see we have our, we have our buttons here. Um, just like with the cart link, we wanna listen for cart update events. And um, when they happen, we're going to pass our instance into the add event listener method so we can use handle event with this one because we've got multiple events let's check the event type so if it's a cart updated event we're going to run this render and then we can return because we don't need to do anything else in this function um, and just with this little piece of code in place let me comment out that other event listener for a second um, we can uh, we can do things like so let's go um, uh, anchor is actually the uid on here so let's go ahead and add that and you can see the, the cart link updates, but also this event automatically, or this automatically renders a new UI as well, just from me adding, um, adding the cart. Let's go back over to the HTML. Um, we've got parrot is another one, right? So if we go parrot, um, I spelled parrot wrong, and that is why, so we'll go like that. You can see these react to that state change and automatically update themselves, which is really, really awesome. We don't have to do a ton of extra work there. Uh, the last thing we want to do, we want to listen for button clicks inside our component. So I'm going to add a click event listener to this, to the, um, the custom element. And uh, inside handle event, if the event type is click, and if the event target, the thing that triggered that event, is inside or is itself a button, we're going to run the cart add method, passing in the UID and the price as arguments. Um, and with that last piece in place, 
if we reload, when I hit the add to cart button, it um, triggers the custom event, which updates our cart link. And then that custom event also triggers the UI inside our component to update as well. Um, so that's also, by the way, that is why we are not um, inside here, why we're not also running this render. We don't need to because when we update the cart, it automatically triggers this event, which triggers a render. Um, so this is how I would do it. I've seen other people use other patterns like pub sub. Um, I really like custom events. Uh, I feel like they work very, very well for this sort of thing. They also allow different components to talk to each other. So you don't always have to have that central hub or store. Different components can emit events that other components can respond to. It's just a really nice way to keep all of your code organized and have them all talking to each other. Um, uh, also, one quick note on the signal. Um, in a real-world application, I would either make this a little bit more generic or um, I would make it very specific where the class was actually called cart. But for teaching purposes, hopefully that helps you kind of understand where we're going with all of this. Um, and I'd probably have some different uh, event types and things like that too. Maybe one to remove items from the cart as well. I recently decided to stop selling expensive courses that most folks can only afford with a corporate training budget and focus on creating more excellent free content, including YouTube videos like this one. A recurring Go Make Things membership helps me create more videos like this and also gets you some cool perks like access to my private Discord community and my personal collection of courses, guides, and code snippets. There are a range of membership levels available and they all get the same stuff. Even $3 a month helps keep this channel going. You can join or learn more at gomakethings.com slash join.